everybody, it's Kendra here from This DIY Mom Life. Thank you so much for checking out my video today. I'm really excited to share all the things I have been working on over the last couple of months. So I haven't had the chance to sit down and film this style of video in a little while. You may have noticed I've been posting some knitting basics videos like how to knit, things like that, here on my channel. Um, and that's just answering some questions that I've been asked um, and requests for making some tutorials. So I don't want to just do that and give up on sharing what I've been working on. So I thought I would sit down and give you a little bit of an update. Um, and it's kind of felt like I haven't been doing too much knitting in the, over the past few months. However, I think I've kind of expanded and today looking at my pile of makes to share, I have a mixture of knitting, spinning, sewing, and cross stitch. And so I'm going to try and divide them up and put down in the description when each section is. So if you're you know, more interested in cross stitch, that's gonna be closer to the end and you can kind of skip ahead to that if that's what you want to see. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of an update and a special welcome to anybody who is new here. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, then I guess just the brief summary is that um, I am a mom of three and my youngest was born three months ago now. I've really had a lot of fun sharing what I've been working on as well as some tutorials and things like that here on YouTube. Um, but you can also find me over on Instagram and my username there is from Vibrant Fields and I'll make sure to link that down below if you want to follow me there. I've been trying to kind of keep it as a kind of crafty journal of sorts to share what I've been working on. Um, and so right now it's the end of July. July, we're about halfway through the summer and a lot of my making time has been spent doing other things like working in the garden or being outside having you know some beach days with the kids things like that um, but I've still had time to get some things done and it wasn't really still I heard until I started pulling things out I realized like oh there's a pretty big pile of stuff here and most notably I guess is cross stitching which is something I haven't really done too much over the past few years um, and if you watched my last update, I did share a little bit of what I was working on. Um, but progress on that seems so much slower than knitting. And so it seems like regular updates, maybe I don't have as much to share because I'm kind of working on one thing at a time. But I'm going to go over all of it. And like I said, feel free to skip ahead if you're only interested in a few things. So first off, I am wearing one of my finished objects. This is the Risen Sweater. Um, it is a pattern by Melanie Berg. And this is actually the third time I have knit this. Um, it has this pattern texture detail around the neckband and then also on the sleeves and it's also on the hem. I made this to be a nice summer top, meaning short sleeves and it's very thin and light. This is knit out of Holstarn Coast in the marsh colorway. I got this yarn in the spring um, cone sale. I don't know if they were selling off the cone um, cones of yarn, I guess. And yes, yeah, it's really nice green and it's been really nice for summer. It's a really lightweight layer that it works well like just to throw over a tank top like I'm wearing today. Um, and short sleeves, all that sort of good stuff. And on my last update, I was sharing how I was having some gauge issues with all the purling in it. And in the end, I think it's blocked out fairly well. It's not perfect, but it's pretty okay. Um, it's not super uneven. I don't think anybody would notice it. But um, I know that was kind of a frustrating point, realizing that my pearl rows were looser than my knit rows. And I haven't really jumped into another cardigan since then to really work on that more. There was a suggestion to try um, backwards knitting in the comments and I thought maybe switching up the technique would be a good place to start if I'm going to knit another cardigan. Um, but I haven't done that yet, so I'll keep you updated on that. But this is the first thing that I finished off and it felt good to be done. Like I said, I've knit this pattern three times now and it's just such a wearable, easy cardigan. Um, and I'll make sure to link down all the patterns and things below if you didn't catch it or you want to check it out for yourself. And so far all the ones I have knit have looked so different and a lot of that goes down to yarn. The other sweater I kept for myself that is knit like this is out of a really speckly yarn and so it just looks very different and it feels like it kind of fits a different hole in what I wear um, just because of that. My next finished object is another duplicate and this is the May sweater by Andrea Mallory. It's a short sleeve top um, and this is the second one I have knit now out of the same yarn, just a different color. It is the Amethyst Heather colorway of Knit Picks, what is it? Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash. So this sweater, 
I also, this is a modified version. There was supposed to be a texture stitch throughout. Um, however, I did not put it in. I did use the um, slip stitch down the front and then it's also on the side seams and on the back. The back also has this big deep V and it has a high-low hem. Let's see if I can show you better. So it's a little bit longer in the back than in the front. But for me, this is kind of a perfect sort of tunic length that works really well over leggings um, because it's quite a bit longer in the back when it's being worn. It's drapey and big and yeah, it's just really enjoyable to wear. And I think for fall, it will be perfect where you don't need something super hot, but it's a really nice layer to have. And yeah, I've been surprised between this one and the purple one now, um, just how much I like the short sleeves. So the May pattern just feels like a really wearable top. And I have the same, like I said, I the one I knit before is in that like green color. And um, I've worn it quite a lot. Uh, so I thought that this would be a nice addition as well. So the next thing I was working on is this little knitted romper. This is knit out of one of the Knit Crate yarns in Watermelon. And when I got it, it seemed like this is the perfect summer color. Um, so I modified a pattern fairly heavily to get to this point. You can see there's a leaf design right on the very top. And I used that design from the Ellie dress, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. And it's actually knit from a worsted weight yarn. And like I said, it's a dress. So I am using the fingering weight yarn and I wanted it to be like a romper or a onesie. So it buttons at the bottom here. And I just modified the shape so that it would have leg holes and button together. I also made a fairly large area on the bottom for a cloth diaper to fit in there, um, which is sometimes an issue. So that's kind of how that ended up. And I think it is so sweet and just very cute. I also knit a pretty good number of hats. So I'm trying to remember in my last video, I had some multicolored fiber. I think it was at that stage when I had shared it last. It was a lot of white with a lot of speckling and bright colors in it. So I will put in a picture of what that looked like spun up. And I went ahead and jumped right into the knitting of it. So I decided originally I was going to try to make hats out of that yarn. It was 100% Falkland wool. And I got two hats out of it, plus a pretty good size scrap as well. And these are the two kid size hats I ended up with, one for each of my kids. And I ordered these pom-poms on Amazon. It came in a multicolor pack, so they each picked the one they wanted, but there's a lot of brown shades in there as well. This first one here was knit. Uh, this is the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits. You can see all the different layers of color and it looks so interesting to see the way that um, those bright colors really muted down with all the white that was in the um, roving when I got ready to spin it. Really changed things. And then this is the second one. I used the numbers from the barley head on this, but I just did rows of stockinette and rows of garter and did a few bands of that. And this is the second one for my son. And he picked a black pom-pom to go on top. So these are these two finished handspun hats. Now because I was knitting some hats, they're such a nice quick project. It seemed like a really good thing to do when it's been hot, something small, easy to pack up, and um, you don't wanna carry around maybe a sweater or a blanket. So I also used just a little scrap of sock yarn to knit this little baby hat. This pattern is Norwegian Sweet Baby Cap, it's called. I have had this in my queue for years and I've just never got around to knitting it. It's fingering weight and I remember when I first found it, I thought there's no way I could get through a fingering weight hat. That seems like it would take forever. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've been knitting pretty much like crazy since then. So it seemed a lot more manageable at this point. Um, but this yarn I had dyed up when I was first practicing dyeing some self-striping yarns and it's really kind of faded and speckly. I have a pair of socks out of it and it was just so fun. I had enough left. I thought I could make this little hat. It's kind of, it fits well right now and it's, it ties under the chin obviously, but I don't know that it's going to fit all that well in the fall. So I might use this pattern and make one the size, the size larger. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure to link that pattern. It's so sweet and such an easy little design. 
So then I also had a couple baby showers of babies bored in our community recently and so I thought I would try to get ahead and make a few things that would be easy to gift. And so the next thing I moved on to was making antler hats, which is another pattern by Tin Cat Knits. It's a free pattern. And I made three of these. I gifted the other one already. And I knit these out of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and the Mist, Heather Mist, something like that color. I had two balls of it and it made three hats altogether. They are both the baby size hat in the pattern, but I think they would probably fit a generally like maybe three to 12 month old, depending on the size of their head. These are more of those pom poms from that pack. I think they worked out so well. There's a string on there. But yeah, these are really fun to make up and I'm glad I have a few made ahead for the next time we need one to gift. So my very last knitting project is one I started recently when I've been working on all these other things like crochet and other yarny things, but I realized I hadn't actually been knitting much. I, um, I finished those hats a few months ago, maybe a month ago, and uh, yeah, it's been a few weeks without actually picking up the knitting needle. So I decided to cast on just a little baby sweater. I know baby sweaters have been a thing around here lately, but they grow so fast. It's nice to have one that fits really well. This one should be nice and warm and it uses up just so many little scraps. So this is a little color work. It's going to be a cardigan. I'm using this Strange Brew pattern by Tin Can Knits. <laughs> you can tell I really enjoy their patterns. So in case you're not familiar, the Strange Brew pattern is basically like a recipe where it gives you numbers for a variety of sizes all the way from infant to up to adult, as well as yarn weights. And it gives you options as far as adding in color work sections. And so you can kind of mix and match, pick your own. And I had a lot of fun. They have a little free printable with some graph paper to try to make up um, some new designs, things I thought would be really cute to see. So this is where I ended up. These scraps are all leftovers. So like this navy blue is what I made my Citadel sweater out of. And this purple, the reddish purple, is the one that I just made my May sweater out of. It really doesn't take much when you're talking about a baby size sweater. So I really like this top design. The second one, I knew the contrast would be pretty low, but I thought I'd stick it in anyways. It has little hearts on it. And this third one, I am probably the least happy with this design, but I decided to go with it anyways. <laughs> I tried lots of different things and see what I liked. Um, and I hope that it'll block out a little bit flatter. It was three colors at a time, so it's just, again, it needs a good blocking. And I think it will solve a lot of those problems. But it's kind of like this little star snowflake sort of thing. I am also trying to do a steak for the first time right down the middle here, which means I'm going to cut it and add button bands and make it into a cardigan in the end. So I think I started just this just a few days ago and it's, it's knitting up really quickly as baby things tend to do. I'm knitting it on size six Shagu needles, an interchangeable set. And so I just have a couple, maybe an inch or two. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to add one more of that first kind of swooshy color work design right before doing the bottom ribbing and then moving on to the sleeves after that. Next up is going to be crochet. So the first project is one I'm not maybe crazy about, but I've had this yarn. It was given to me quite a few skeins. Um, it's almost this Christmassy, let's see, Deborah Norville Everyday Soft Worship. It's very soft. Um, and so I decided that after, instead of just having it sit here, I was going to start knitting it or crocheting it. And I'm just making it into a little blanket. I'm doing rows of these zigzags and then I'm going to piece them together. I was gonna make baby blanket maybe, but we'll see how far my yarn gets me. And yeah, this is kind of what it's looking up, looking like it's soft, it's really nice to work with. It's an acrylic yarn. Um, and it's cool to see the stripes go. And I think, and that's why I decided to go with these narrower stripes so that they would kind of work out this way. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of a pick up in between project sort of thing. I have quite a few balls of it, so it's not, I'm not dying to get it done or anything. It might be gifted when it's done, um, but it's just nice to have something on the go that's easy to pick up. So my other crochet projects have taken a little bit more time and have been pretty exciting to be working on. So I've been looking on Ravelry and I was looking at a lot of the stuffed animal sorts of patterns and I kept running across patterns by the same designer out of this same book. And so I decided I was just gonna jump on it. I picked this up on Amazon. It's called Animal Friends of Pika Pow. And this is just this beautiful book with these really cute 
little stuffed animals. Something about all these designs, they're just so sweet. You can look at them up on Ravelry, but the designs are not available on Ravelry. The designer, her name is down here, Yan, and um, on Instagram, I started following her, and it's Pika Pow Yan is where she can be found. Um, and then in here, you can see there's 20 different animals, and they are just so cute. So I have made three of them. The first one I made, I'm just gonna show you the picture in here and then I will insert one of the one that I made. This is little Hector Rhinoceros. His little pants come off and he has polka dot underwear underneath. And that's one of the things I like is that so many of these little animals have something interactive, like something comes off or on or just some little element of surprise. The little Hector is the first one I made. And while I'm up here, I'll show you the other two, her pictures of them. Next being Victor Frog, and then I'll show you the one that I made. I've got him here, and Rosa Cheetah, this one right here. So these are the other two I have to show you. So here's little Victor, and Rosa. These little friends. I ended up putting some safety eyes in for all these ones. I think it really makes a difference. And then there's a little bit of embroidery. I um, mean, there's a little bit of sewing, um, but not a ton. Definitely where it's possible to um, make them continuously, she does sew. And then there's a few elements that are added on at the end. So on Victor, he's got these shorts and little show off his underwear here. <laughs> these little polka dotted ones. And they come all the way off. Um, and he's got little flippers for feet. Happy little guy. And Rosa Cheetah here, her dress comes off. Nothing too surprising. I did make a few adjustments. I added on this striped bit at the bottom as well as the star. And it comes off and just has a pink shirt underneath. So I also want to talk about the yarn quickly for these crochet projects. And I went to Michael's just looking to see what they had. I was thought about ordering some cotton from nitpicks but I didn't really want to wait around for that um, and the book recommends using cotton and it goes through benefits to that quite a bit. I mean I like making animals out of wool as well um, but I thought I'd see what they had and they had a big end display all of, um, kind of devoted to crochet animals and amigurumi. is that how you say that? I don't know um, but different um, pattern ideas and different yarns available. The first yarn I tried out um, was the Capri line by Loops and Thread it's 87 yards and it sells for regular three dollars but it's been on for two dollars pretty much all summer when i went to look for it at michael's 87 let's see it's 57 percent cotton 28 percent nylon and 15 percent polyester and i picked up quite a few colors and that's kind of the thing is that um you don't need a lot like this is the cheek color and all of my animals had cheeks but it takes so little that it's nice that for two dollars you know to do multiple things it's not a huge investment so you don't get a ton um and for the main color of each of the animals i have needed two of these balls so this is the first one and i do like it it's very soft and that's definitely my favorite part about it however um i do find it's very loosely plied i don't know how well you can see that or at the end you can see it's kind of fraying in here and I found it was really easy to miss one of those little plies when crocheting, especially because you crochet on such a dense gauge so that you don't have stuffing sticking through. So I'll zoom in on Victor here. Let's see if you can see. There's little spots where there's like right here, a tiny little loop. I don't know, it's not super evident. And I think if you weren't a maker, you might not notice it, but I notice it and I don't love it. So I had enough to do the first two, Hector and Victor. So then for the cheetah, I decided to try a different one and that is by Lion Brand. This is recycled cotton. And this one here is, let's see, 85% cotton, 15% polyester. To me, this feels much more in the line of like dishcloth cotton. It's not the same and it doesn't like it's just it's not scratchy or anything but this one is like almost plush and soft and this one is more tightly wound um kind of like in a hand spun how the tighter it's plied or spun the more it's durable but it's also maybe a little bit rougher like less plump anyways 
I definitely notice a difference in the finished crochet items, but these are the two yarns I've been using, and I would use them both again. It's not that they were bad. Um, I think, like again, it's a, it's a hard, <laughs> I like that this one didn't have the loops, but I like the softness of this. So I think either way, you're not gonna go wrong. So next up, I'm gonna share with you my spinning. So a while ago, there was a bunch of posts on YouTube and Instagram about the, um, what's it called, spin and make along, which the idea was to spin with a purpose um, and to make something within this time period with all these other people. So I decided I would use some of the 100% Peruvian Highland wool that I had and I split it up to make different coordinating colors that I was going to make into a large shawl project. Um, and I'll show you what I got. I'm not sure I'm gonna jump on that still. I think that's kind of the trouble with spinning is that things don't always turn out the way you're expecting or it seems like, um, I don't know, it doesn't matter. So I'll just show you what I have. They're all around 50 grams and I haven't done all the math as far as yardage and everything because I was thinking if I put them into a shawl it won't really matter all that much. But these are the first four little mini skeins that I spun up. I guess I'll go through them one at a time. I'll start with my least favorite. And I don't know why I wound this so strange. My Swift is kind of broken. So I've just been kind of using what I have. This one's definitely all the green tones, definitely in the emerald family, I would say. Um, there is a lot of variation, but it's fairly solid. Um, it's definitely distinctly green. And I mean, this is kind of what I was going for. It's just, it's funny seeing the ideas come from just an idea in your head to dyeing them into the fiber, to spinning them into the yarn, to making them into the project. Um, it's all somewhat predictable and somewhat totally unpredictable, or at least my imagining isn't always the way that I think it will be. So all four of these skeins I chain plied, which I chain plied that multicolored skein I made the hats out of, but and that was my first chain ply project. But these have all been chain planted as well. This is the first. This is my second little skein. Oh. And uh, again, I'll share, I'll share a picture of the before. But it's this deep purple. And I had these little rainbow sections, which ended up getting pretty muddy, which is okay. Um, they've now become mostly brown sections. I think the solution would be to make larger sections in the future. It's just it has variation. It doesn't look at all rainbow. All right, I'm back and I've gained some help. All right, next up, I will show you this one here. This is this combination of the navies and these turquoise colors. See, so sticking with the chain ply, and the colors kind of stuck to themselves pretty well. They didn't get too, like it's not barber pulled at all. Well, hardly at all. It's pretty individual. And this is the last one here. I really like how this one came out. It was these purples and pinks. And just the way they all blended together, I think it's really interesting and really usable. So these are those first four skeins. And the last one is 100 grams, and I thought that this would be kind of like the color that goes in between all the other ones, but I don't know. I'm really happy with this skein. It's probably my favorite one I've ever spun. So I dyed this using the same color scheme as the four previous. I used the same colors that I mixed, um, but I decided to do a fractal spin and a two ply. So there's lots of barber pulling going on. I don't know if you're familiar with a fractal spin, but the colors are supposed to really shift. So once I did this, I'm really not sure what I'm going to make. If I'm going to end up putting this all into a scarf, I'd really like to see this one knit with itself rather than split up those other minis. Um, so we'll see what happens with it. So I'll have to stay tuned as far as what that becomes. I'm really kind of on the fence about what I want to do with it. All right, I still have sewing and stitching and I think I'm gonna start with stitching today. So my first project is one that I think I just shared the kit last time. It's called Be The Light. It's a dimensions kit. You can see there's these fireflies. It's one I really liked. Be a light to the world is what it says on there. And there's fireflies and candles and mason jars. Just a really cute little, little kit, little design. And I got that finished up. I just picked up a frame at the grocery store. So it's not the best and I don't know it's gonna stay. I don't love the white. But if you can get past the glare, there is the finished stitch. 
So that is the first thing that I was working on. And after that, I went back to my kitty project, which I did share last time and I haven't gotten a ton of progress on because I've been working on other things, but I thought I'd share, with, share it with you anyways. And it's this one here. It's called Three Bird Watchers. It's an old, older design, I think. It's been around for a while. Um, and I got this quite a few years ago. I had started it and um, put it away for a while when I made a mistake, ripped it out, just started it back again this spring. It's basically the short version. This is on 18 count Ada. That came in the kit in this ivory. This is where it is at now. So you have got two kitty faces. I think those were done before. I've been working on the curtains on the side. Got most of those top blocks there done. I want to get this curtain and before moving down and then the birds go at the front bottom. Got some help here. And this kit utilizes a lot of half stitches in the background, which I think really makes those kitty faces pop. I think that's something common that Dimensions does in their kits. At least I've heard it is. It looks, yeah, like there's definitely not total full coverage, but again, that's half stitches. And I think once it's, you know, a full piece, it will be easier to see. My next stitching project, I ordered this and I think I got it at the end of June and I just finished it this week. So I guess it took right around a month. It's another dimensions kit. Okay, it says to have and to hold from this day forward. It's an anniversary piece and I'm giving it as an anniversary gift with the names and the date. This is 14 count Ada on here. And this is complete. Pull it up here, these flowers. You know, this isn't something I would usually go for like for myself, but I'm really happy with this. I, it was really fun to see those colors. And you know, it looks like pink, but man, there's a lot of different blends and shades of pink in each one of those flowers. This is going to be a gift and I don't think they my in-laws watch my video. That's who it's going to for their 40th anniversary. I'll try to not show their names fully in case they don't want that broadcast with the world. But that's going to be going to them. And like I said, it's for my in-laws. My mother-in-law really loves flowers. So hopefully it goes over well. And she is a former cross stitcher. I don't think she's done any in many years, but she still has quite a few pieces up around the house when she used to stitch, so I hope she enjoys this. This is the final piece. I do need to find a frame for it. All right, one last stitching project to share with you, and I just got it started. I'll insert a picture because it's a PDF, so I don't have one printed off. It is called Love One Another by Satsuma Street. Satsuma Street has a lot of really neat, kind of more modern patterns, and I like looking at all of them, but I decided to stitch this one and put our family name at the bottom. It's kind of where my, my plan is. Um, I also made a little bit of a change in the colors. I pulled out my flosses here. Um, and in the design, there's quite a few, I think there's four shades of orange and I decided to swap them for purples. So I'll see, hopefully it works out well. I just went for the secondary color root, kind of going the other way on the color wheel. So I hope that works out. But this here is the palette. These are the colors that'll be used. Really bright and fun. And this is how far I am as of today. This is the rainbow around the outside. It says love one another in this middle part and then the flowers in the family name at the bottom. I plan to finish it like in the model as a wall hanging, assuming all goes well. You can see if I zoom right in here, whoop. This is my first time stitching on even weave um, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. And these purples are the first two of my modifications. And we'll see how it looks in the end. I'm really, it's really fascinating to see it come to be. All right, we've come to my last section on sewing. I have four dresses to share with you, two for me and two for my five-year-old. So I'll start with hers, and I've knit them both from this Butterick pattern, B6046. No, I did one view D, the pink one, and one of view C, this white one here. So my daughter's really into wearing fancy church dresses, so they've been really fun to make. We went to the fabric store, and she picked out this pink one. It's like a see-through eyelet sort of fabric see it here so I just did a white lining underneath oh I guess the bow's not tied right now but it's pretty simple bodice gathered skirt I did the size 6 option and it has that bow that could be tied front or back they're sewn on to, to tie it in the front which is what she wanted um, but it could go either pretty easily 
So that is the first one. This is the second polka dot. It's a lot more of a sheer, it's not silky, it's polyester, I think, fabric, but that sort of feel to it. Kind of gathered on the sides. I knit the, or I didn't knit. I sewed the size six in both of these and they were both a little big. So I just tacked the, the um, straps down a little bit further and I think it'll work. It'll work for this summer and the next summer I can just undo that tack and have them fit a little longer, um, but it works for now for sure. And this one has this kind of extra layer, this little ruffle to it, I guess. And I ended up making this one. Um, again, this was just at the fabric store, I saw it, and the baby was given a little polka dot dress of this like same size and everything, black and white. So I thought I would make her one to match. Oh, you can see the tie here. This was worn yesterday, so it's not super clean. But yeah, the tie can be done front or back again. She likes her bows in the front, but in the back looks nice too. It covers up that zipper part. And those are her two dresses. I also made two for myself. The first one is this Butterick pattern here. I made view B, which is this one here. Has a tie in the middle. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but it's this long kind of flowy dress. Ties cinches up kind of around the waist. Pretty basic, but been nice it's just to have for summer again it's been worn quite a few times and not been ironed so this is the last one that I made it's from this Butterick B6090 and I made this sleeveless version this one here but I use this bright bluish color fabric so it has gathers right here which hit kind of right here on me and then it, these little buttons down the front. I would say this is kind of a stretch for me skill-wise. <laughs> I haven't done as much sewing, especially of things that are more fitted or tailored. Um, and I went to the store and I bought the right interfacings and things, which feels like, you know, kind of the first step. A lot of the sewing I've done over the past few years has been upcycling, turning old clothes into new clothes, things like that. And so it's been really nice to actually, you know, follow a pattern and use the right supplies. Oh, and both of these dresses have pockets on the side, which is super fun. And then, yeah, gathered in the front and it has some gathers in the back as well. All right, so that is all I have to show you. <laughs> Thank you for watching if you got this far. If you have any questions, I'll try to leave as many of the links in the description of things I've been working on if you want more information, but feel free to ask and I can fill in the gaps if I forgot anything. Or, you know, if you want to tell me what you've been working on, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, that is all from me for today. I hope to check in at some point in the future here. We'll see what I get done. I don't want to come in too soon and then not have anything to share, but I had a pretty, you know, sizable pile today. So I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great summer and I will see you next time. Bye.